and we're back. Sorry about that, guys. I guess I got a little too excited about that spinner. We'll give everybody a minute. As I was saying, when Coach came up with this idea and said, what about if we tried a spinner? I was really excited to try it out with my class. And let me tell you, they get really excited to spin that wheel. So, oh, I love that. Tell me, tell me more about that, Caitlin, adding a sock day as a reward. And here's the thing, guys. You are more than welcome to make up your own levels to the scoreboard. We've heard things like having kids choose the partner that they get to sit by. We've heard of things like, um, oh, I think, Caitlin, if you're talking about your sock day, it's a day where they get to take off their shoes and read a book in their socks or something like that. So there's all different rewards that you can use when they move up to the next level. The key is variety and strip. My kids get to take off their shoes. Yes, okay, that's what I remembered. The key here is, is changing it up in variety. Guys, every other classroom management system that I've heard of, even things that I've tried before. I, I was a clothespin person. Like, I know, can you believe that? I was one of those clothespin people. And I'm not putting that down, but what I'm telling you guys is there's better out there. And with this, that clothespin chart, maybe that first week of school, that's gonna work great. And then guess what? That can't last all year long. And so what you find is the kids who are always losing recess are always losing recess. And it loses its its ability to work. You can't, you can't hear. I'm so sorry. It loses its ability to work effectively and to last the whole year long. So I'm telling you, the scoreboard is a great tool to keep them motivated throughout the whole school year because it's going to change as they move up levels. All right, I am ready to take questions. I did see a question pop up there. I think it said something about how do you stay motivated all year long. So as a teacher, how do we stay motivated? Um, we stay motivated, I would say, my biggest way I stayed motivated was I kept going to whole brain teaching conferences. I went as often as I could. Now, if you don't have the, the ability to go to a whole brain teaching conference, as often as I was going, I would say that your best bet is to check in on Scope every week. I'm here every Tuesday at four o'clock Pacific time. Coach is on Scope every Sunday at one o'clock. I also highly encourage you to check out videos online, to check out any of the old webinars that are available online. The more that you check in, with what's going on with whole brain teaching and the more that you continue to just re like um, rehear about these strategies. I, I'm telling you, Coach and I talked about this and Chris Rexted talked about this, is um, how do you stay consistent daily so I don't lose kids' interest? I'll talk to you about that in just a second. Um, when Chris and, and Coach and I talked, years and years ago when we first started all this, it was the same conference, the first Saturday of the month and I'm telling you the more I heard about it the more motivated I was and I'm gonna tell you also your kids are gonna stay motivated if you're staying motivated so if you start to lose interest or you're not staying consistent you're gonna see your kids sliding back and not staying as consistent now for the one who said how do we keep their interest all day long i don't know if you had a chance to check out the activities list we did talk about an activities list the last two weeks which was a way to keep our schedule so we had our schedule we had the games we were playing and the motivators that we were using during each of those games that activities list has really helped me to keep it consistent throughout the day and make sure that i'm using my strategies all day long Long. I saw another question bump up and it was talking about I think it said that you um, that you've been stuck on level three for a while if that's not correct ask me the question again but if you've been but this goes out to anybody if you've been stuck on a level for a while one of the strategies we talked about with the scoreboard is the ping-ponging remember when you're ping-ponging you're going back and forth on the scoreboard okay so you're gonna give a couple smileys a frowny a smiley a frowny a frowny and you're ping-ponging them back on the board if you're only going up to the board when you're going up to do a negative 
a, a frowny point and you're not using it very often, it's not going to bump up the participation. So you use it to ping pong them back and forth to get them motivated. As you're ping ponging them back and forth, if you haven't moved up a level in a while, they might need a class win. So you're going to work with them so that they move back and forth and get that motivation going so that you can get them a class win. You want to get them up through the levels because you want to keep them motivated. If they've been stuck on a level for a long time, it's going to be really hard to keep them motivated because they're thinking, we've been stuck on level three forever. We're never going to get moving. You may need to do practices. You may need to do a little wrong way, right way. So with wrong way, right way, you're practicing doing it the wrong way, and then you're practicing doing the right way. No start at WBT in October or November. Is level three too quick? Absolutely not. No. Think about it like this. When you're going up through your wins, during the week in a five-day week, you quite possibly could have two wins that week. You're not going to have a win every day. And then maybe the following week you have three wins, okay? So in two weeks time, you could move up a level, okay? If you're having weeks where they're losing all week long, you're going to need to get some wins in there. You're, you, you do not want a week every week where the kids are losing every day. So if you're already on level three, that's a good thing because you're using your scoreboard and the kids are moving up through the levels. Remember, we don't want to reward too much and we don't want to punish too much. If we're rewarding too much, they're going to get lazy and they're not going to be motivated. If we punish too much, they're going to give up. So wins during the week, I would say between two to three wins a week is pretty great, okay? So no going up to level three, that isn't too quick. And those questions popped up quickly. If you can give them to me again, I think what I had been seeing that was popping up was more severe um, behavioral problems is the questions that I saw coming up. No problem. Um, if that was the question, here's what I'm going to tell you. You need to check out Teaching Challenging Students. There's um, there's also, down, if you have the book Teaching Challenging Students, that's going to help you. But um, if you look online and you pull up looking at the ebook that's available that has to do with Teaching Challenging Students, there are several games for those kids who are challenging. There are different levels to our classroom management system. So we start out, it's, it's like a funnel, guys. So at the beginning of the year, your main tools that you're going to try to get the majority of your class is going to be your scoreboard and your super improvers. You're going to have some kids who are going to be acting up and having behavioral problems. And we talked about the recess squad. So that's going to be your recess squad kids. As the year goes on, we have our practice cards. Our practice cards are going to hone in on the kids who are having the most behavioral problems. So if you haven't checked out practice cards, practice cards replaces the, clo the clothespins. That's the one that gets rid of the clothespin chart because instead of them arbitrarily moving up and down on a clothespin on the clothespin chart, they are then instead getting a picture card that has the rule that they have to practice. The problem that we've had before that I and myself have had before when I was using the, the clothespin chart, I would have students who would lose recess and you would ask those students, why did you lose recess? And you know what their response was? Their response to me was, because I was bad. Or they would say, I don't know. Most of the time, they don't even know. They don't even remember why they lost their recess. All they know, and, and let me tell you, those kids who make it to lose recess on that clothespin chart, they probably made it to the lose recess the year before that, and the year before that, and the year before that. It's not changing the behaviors. So what is the difference with the practice cards? The practice cards, check it out. It's a free download on Whole Brain Teaching. But those practice cards, and I'll show you a little picture really quick. Over here, here are my practice cards, okay? Instead of a student moving their clothespin, which, guys, when a kid gets up and moves their clothespin, where are they looking? They're watching the kid in the back of the classroom walking to the back of the classroom. With my practice cards, they are up here in the front by me. And if a student is breaking their rule, breaking a rule, so I have a student who isn't following my directions, I'm pulling out rule one and I'm sticking it in their number pocket. Then during recess, yes, those can be found on the website. Check out practice cards, it's a free download. This child would be practicing rule one during their recess. Here's the difference, guys. 
And there's a note that goes with it too. And the difference with the practice cards is, there we go, nope. One of these days, I'm gonna be so good at this technology. Okay, the thing with the practice cards that's the difference is now when I would ask a student, why did you lose your recess? They don't tell me, I don't know, or I forgot, or I don't know why I lost my recess. They say to me, I broke a rule. Okay, what rule did you break? I wasn't following the directions. Okay, what are you gonna do differently tomorrow? I'm gonna follow the teacher's directions. Or I wasn't raising my hand for permission to speak. Or I wasn't making smart choices. Yes, don't forget about those guys. Remember, this is a year-long classroom management system. We've been talking about the scoreboard. The scoreboard runs all year long. Super Improvers team runs all year long. That's a year-long part of your system. But in between, you're starting out at the beginning of the year and you're using that scoreboard consistently, you're using Super Improvers consistently. Then we usually try to say after Christmas, try to hold out till Christmas. You know, in between, you've got recess squad and then after Christmas, we're going to pull out those practice we're going to pull out the practice cards, which again is available as a download online. From there, we also have the independence group. The independence group is how you're gonna break up little groups of, of that you might have in your classroom of students who are not participating and they're not doing what they need to be doing. So you can have the independence group. From there, we also have the bullseye game. So there is a ton of materials, guys. You just gotta go look online and remember that it's like a funnel. We're starting out at the beginning of the year. We're trying to get the most of our class. As the year goes on, then we're gonna whittle out the kids who have the problematic behaviors because remember, we've got back pocket strategies. Now I'm getting some of those kids with recess squad. Okay, as the year goes on, now my problematic students, it's kind of whittling down, and now I'm going to do my practice cards. And as I do my practice cards, that's gonna get rid of some of the problematic behaviors. Then I'm gonna go to independence group, and as I get down, my most, most, most difficult ones, yes, recess squad is before practice cards. My most difficult students, I'm gonna do the bullseye game, okay? So those are, it's a ton of strategies, guys. That is, it's all for you. It's in Coach B's book, Teaching Challenging Students, but it's also available for you online if you wanna check it out online. I had someone who asked a question about Recess Squad. We did that in a scope a couple weeks ago, so I'll go over it really quick with you. Here is Recess Squad. And, okay, Recess Squad, very quickly. I'm gonna do it as if I was doing it with my smileys versus saddies, and since I'm using this part of the scoreboard, I'm sorry, since I'm using this part of the board, my scoreboard is gonna be kind of small, so bear with me, okay? So what we talk about is we say, you know, I have some experts in the room who are really great at thinking, looking, and acting two grade levels higher, okay? But there are some of our students who are gonna need a little bit more practice. So if you're doing a great job, you're gonna practice right now during class. But if you need a little, back, a little bit of extra practice, you're gonna have to practice during your, I'll give you that extra practice during your recess. And then what happens is during the day, you tell them, if I see someone that needs extra practice at the bottom of my scoreboard, and forgive me for my mini scoreboard, I am going to make a check mark. Okay, and that means that's one person who's gonna be in my recess squad, okay? So if I see someone else, I might make another check mark. That's someone else in my recess squad, okay? Oh, if I see someone else, I might make another check mark. Now all the while, guys, you're never pointing out a student. You're not pointing at a student and telling them that they're the one that is gonna be in recess squad. You just say, I see someone know who it is and so hopefully just by seeing the one check mark there a lot of your students who might be thinking oh I hope that person isn't me are going to all of a sudden start participating and doing what you ask them to do the other ones who are not behaving then they're just going to get a check mark out the, up there when it's recess time the recess squad is out there for you start out with 30 seconds and they're just sitting practicing the rules it's kind of like a precursor 
for our practice cards without the official card and the note that goes home. I also talked to um, you guys before. I'm on duty during recess. Hold on just a second. I'll let you know. Um, another thing, um, and I just lost my track of my, oh, another thing I talked to you guys about, recess squad, they're sitting and practicing those, um, the rules for 30 seconds. And, and I have my rules on tongue depressors. So you could even have a class leader sitting out there with those rules, holding up the different rules so that they could say the rules, okay? I've also had before, we've been talking about participation. I have a CD that I play in the morning that has my participation songs. I set up my boom box. I, I'm sorry, it has my calendar songs. I set up my boom box. The kids sit in front of the boom box. And maybe these are kids who they aren't breaking rules, but I just can't get them to participate. They won't do the gestures. They won't sing the song. So I tell them, well, you can sing it now or during recess squad time. So I sit the boom box in front of them and I play the song and they sit and they play it. They sing the song with it. So, and they do the gestures with it. Now, for the person who asked me about what if you don't have recess duty, remember, this is 30 seconds, guys. And so that's kind of better. If you don't have recess duty, your kids are going outside to go play, and you're keeping a small group in for 30 seconds. As adults, we're thinking 30 seconds doesn't sound like a lot of time. For kindergartners who are watching their friends go out and play, 30 seconds is a long time, and you keep them in for 30 seconds. I realize giving up 30 seconds of our own personal time is not our favorite thing to do, but let me tell you, that 30 seconds is gonna be well worth it. That person might be in recess squad the first day. The next day, they know they don't wanna be in it. They might end up back in recess squad again, but then eventually, you're gonna work them out of being in recess squad because they'd rather go outside and play with their friends. The other thing I was gonna say is some of you said we don't have recess. They say, um, it, like if recess is an issue, you don't have recess, you're not allowed to take time away from recess. If recess is an issue, we also talked about giving the students that on, you know, on a day when you have recess squad and you need to incorporate recess squad, that you might use that time to give the rest of the kids. I know people talked about having a free play time, having pat time, preferred activity time, but something where the rest of the class is able to do something that the kids in recess squad would like to do. And recess squad is practicing the rules or practicing singing the songs or practicing doing the biffy tunes. We talked about doing the biffy tunes. The biffy tunes are our sight words. The kids could be practicing. Let me show you some other things that the recess squad could be doing. If you're having participation, the kids can be in the recess squad, can be practicing the gestures and sing spelling the biffy tune words. If you want to have them, maybe review their math. Maybe you're having them review the math power picks wall. 30 seconds of review of the math power picks wall or the language arts wall. And during that time, the rest of your class is doing something else that they prefer the rest of the class. So that is, and that's a precursor, something that we do prior to moving to practice cards. Recess squad sometimes nips the problems that we have. Then we don't even have to have so many kids who are having their card put up for practice cards. So that was a fast recap. We actually did an entire scope on recess squad. So I hope that helps those of you who had questions about the recess squad. I did have someone who asked me also about recess squad. What do you do when the kid is in recess squad and they refuse to participate or they're in recess squad and they refuse to do the rules? So we have a real quick way to remedy that. We tell the kids you can do it 30 seconds my way or you can do it for five minutes your way. So, and, and maybe five minutes is too much. Maybe you tell them two minutes. But the bottom line is you're giving them a choice. My way is that you sit here and you do the rule for 30, for 30 seconds. Your way is I'm gonna make it even longer and you're still gonna have to do it at some point. So that's kind of a way to nip the ones that don't wanna participate during recess squad. So I don't know if there's any other questions out there. If I missed a few when I was answering the other questions, I'm so sorry. Um, I am here if you have any other questions. If not, um, let me let you guys know that these next two Tuesdays, I will, um, what makes your dear teacher happy? Okay, that's a good question. So rule five, 
keep your dear teacher happy as a specific way to help my students. My students, I ask them this question, what keeps your dear teacher happy? And remember, guys, it's not make your dear teacher happy. I tell my kids, when I come to school, I am already happy. When I wake up, I cannot wait to come see your faces. Like my, the greatest joy of my day is coming to school and seeing you here. So I'm already happy. Remember guys, teaching is a performing art. So you don't have to make your dear teacher happy. You just need to keep your dear teacher happy. And how do you keep me happy? I'm already happy. You don't have to make me happy. How do you keep me happy? The students say, when I learn, and I, because I tell the students, the greatest thing that makes me happy is when you learn. And um, I ask the kids, how do we learn? And I talk to the kids. I do a mini lesson on the brain. I don't do a full lesson on the brain. I have taught the full lesson on the brain for second and third graders. I have not for kindergarten. I keep it simple for them. But I tell them that our brain learns when our body is doing the gestures and our mouth is saying the words. So when our mouth is saying it and our body is doing it, our brain lights up and it learns it. So I ask the kids, how do you learn? And they say, you gotta say it and do it to learn it. So to put it all together, rule five is keep your dear teacher happy. How do you keep your dear teacher happy? They say, when I learn, and how do you learn? You gotta say it and do it to learn it. So that's how you keep your dear teacher happy. Um, uh, the question out there who asked me about Louisiana, unfortunately, I'm really sad because I've been in Louisiana every year so far, and the weeks that it's falling for Louisiana this year, I will be with my kids. My oldest graduated last year, and we are having his graduation celebration um, trip this summer to Hawaii. So I will be in Hawaii, and yes, but I yes, I will be in Las Vegas, so I hope to see a lot of you guys in Vegas. I'm excited to have the three days together with you guys. It's going to be a blast. So, oh, Gerald, tell Kim I said I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm I, sad because I have there. those of you who have gone to Louisiana the last several years, there are some that come regularly every year and or some I met last year who were going again this year, and it's like a reunion. And so I miss those reunions. I'm so sad too. Then I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I hope this summer is amazing in Shreveport and that we are invited back next year because I'm going to both. I want to see you guys everywhere I can see you. So anyway, as I was saying, um, these next two weeks I have spring break. So I will not be meeting here with you guys, but I will be back on Tuesday, April 5th. And so I hope to see you here Tuesday, April 5th at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So anyway, bye you guys. Have a good night. And if you're getting ready to go on spring break, have a great spring break. And I'll see you when I get back. Yes. Oh, you're asking another person. I don't know. Are you going? Tall girl, are you going to Vegas? I, I hope I get to see y'all in Vegas. So anyway, all right, you guys have a good night. Bye everybody.